Yo, 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 welcome back to the MMA Short Show. It's always your boy, Stephen Moustares. And guys, before I get too crazy into this video, you know, as always, my ladies at B-Dubs always hook me up with these posters, UFC 290. And, you know, I got two extra ones, and I'm probably going to be doing some giveaway or something. Like, I don't need two extra ones for sure. I don't need three UFC 290 posters. And, you know, I'm trying to have some fun with it or whatever. I promise I'm not going to get stupid and try to use that, uh, Oh, follow me on all platforms and oh, like this post and do this and do that for the game. Like, no, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm just trying to be nice and just trying to hook these up. So honestly, if you guys want them, just let me know and I'll I'll either give you my email or something. We'll get them sent out to you for sure. So if you guys want that for sure, trust me, I don't mind free, whatever it's trust me. It's, I don't care. So, you know, I want to get into this, guys, straight into it. Alexander Volkanovsky looked absolutely impressive the other night against Yair Rodriguez, which a lot of people probably were expecting. But, you know, it's finally at this point now where, and you guys are talking to somebody who absolutely hates GOAT conversation. Greatest of all time. Oh, the most exciting fighter of all time. Oh, this, that, the third, all the, all these things. Like, I really, really don't like them because I think we just use it. It's way blown out of proportion. Like, especially, especially in sports when it comes to, you know, like the NBA, like, oh, Nikola Jokic, one win. Oh, greatest big man of all time. Like, I hate that shit. It's like, it's like, hey, let's pump the brakes and let these guys career kind of go. But I get it. But, you know, the one thing that we're actually kind of and I have to kind of give it off to him and I want to at least talk to you guys about it because I don't think he's on. He's not the goat even close yet, but the dude is tracking very strongly right now. And clearly it's Volkanovsky right now. I, Because you guys are talking to somebody, you know, you guys, I understand the whole John Jones, you know, narrative where, oh, it's USADA. Oh, he might have been on steroids. Same with Anderson Silva type. But we did see Anderson Silva lose and the end of his career was kind of ugly. So it kind of hurts a lot. And it's like where GSP where, yeah, he knew he was starting to fall off a little bit. So he, he stepped away. But Anderson Silva kept going. And that's the big difference between those two guys. And man, with John Jones, though, it's just so tough for me. I, I mean, I'm a huge John Jones guy. He's my number one fighter. Like, I, I love the guy. I just think what he did at 205 there and the legends that that man took out at such a young age and the way that he was just dominating everybody and finishing everybody. That's that's where it's really tough for me, where it's like, dude, this guy, I've never even seen him lose. Matt Hamill's got that one little win over him because of the most illegal, most bullshit thing I've ever seen in my life with the 12 6 elbow. When Herb Dean was just teaching homie uh, that Taro kid on UFC 290 on Saturday, Herb Dean was like, oh, don't throw 12 6, but he's literally teaching him how to throw 12 6 at the same time. But John Jones, you know, opened this guy up with I don't know how many legal elbows. And then the one that actually like hits him that didn't even really affect it too much. Like it fucked him up still, but he was getting messed up by every other elbow. And we're going to call it a loss. So, but it's tough for me, but I see what you guys say with the USADA thing. And, you know, the one thing I really get frustrated with sometimes is the love that GSP gets nowadays. Like he deserves it. He deserved it when he was fighting. But dude, I was watching back then. And I remember when people were like, oh, you know, GSP is boring. Oh, because he got to a level a lot like Floyd Mayweather. Where it's like, hey, man, I know I can knock these guys out. I know I'm talented. I know I could submit these guys, but I'm taking way too much damage. And why don't I just get smarter out here? My defense is phenomenal. My wrestling is way better than all these. Like, maybe take less chances. And we saw that very heavily towards the end of his career. And people were getting very sick of it. I remember it in the Anderson Silva times where he's just knocking everybody out. And GSP's going out there. Like, I remember people calling him boring, guys. Like, it was like a... The majority, like most people were saying it, like, oh, all he does is lay and pray. And now that the game's evolved and we've seen guys like Habib and all these things and the wrestling just so dominant, like he was ahead of his time and people are starting to respect him more. But it is a little weird for me because I remember back then where it was like he was getting so much hate. And I, I know he only lost to Matt Hughes and Matt Sarah. The Mats get him. But, you know, he went back, beat Matt Hughes two more times after that. Got his went back on Matt Sarah. Like, it's tough. And, you know, with Volkanovsky and GSP, what's really funny is they're both 26 and 2, but Volkanovsky is going to continue to go. And, you know, the one the one notch that I would probably give the GSP over Volkanovsky currently is he definitely beat a way higher level of fighters. I would say at least like more, I should say, not not necessarily because I think Max Holloway and Jose Aldo are, you know, two and even the Islam fight. I know he lost, but I think those three guys right there are, you know, way better than any of the people that you know gsp fought and you guys can argue with me but i mean i'll say like josh koscheck no matt sarah no matt hughes no but bj penn no like i'm sorry guys those guys were good back then but these guys are the way this game has evolved so crazy 
like we see it all the time. All these great guys are losing and stuff. Like it's, it's really hard to get these win streaks going nowadays. And for Volkanovski, I mean, don't get me wrong. I thought he lost the first two fights against Max, but we can't knock him that the judges gave it to him. So there technically wins there. And he's beat Jose Aldo, like I said, who those two are just right then and there. Just two of like on the short list of best featherweights that have ever fought. And for him to beat those guys, and then the third time he beat Max very decisively, the way he just beats down Brian Ortega, the way he just beats down, you know, uh, Korean Zombie, the way he just beats down Islam by the end of the fight, the way he takes out Yair like that. Like, my gosh, dude. Like, Volkanovsky, he's got a chance. I'm telling you guys right now, if he goes back up and fights Islam and gets an Islam win, and say he goes on and beats Aliyah Tapura, and say he finishes it all out with uh, with letting Sterling come up or something and fights Sterling and that. Oh, my gosh, guys. Could you imagine those three fights right there? That would be really, really hard to, you know, at least not argue that it's a little more impressive than what GSP did and a little more impressive than what Anderson Silva did. Like, I still think it's really, really tough to even throw him in there with the John Jones conversation, but I get it. USADA really hurts John Jones. I'm not dumb. I get it. And, you know, even with Anderson Silva, the whole, you know, little steroid accusations there and a little pop and, you know, that's that shit's. But you could also say it was after his leg break. So I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's up. It's up to you guys to decide. But Volkanovsky is making a strong case. Not yet. Not yet. So don't get me wrong, but he is making a strong case and he's on track right now to being one of those guys. And, you know, it's just how impressive this dude is doing it. He looks he looks so unbeatable at times, like he even said in his post fight. Like, I can lose to a decision, and these guys might be able to whatever. Like, you know, maybe they got their night of, you know, maybe, like, control time or maybe just getting the judges to, you know, give them the thing. But he can't get finished. And I, outside of, what, what his first pro fight or second pro fight, uh, when he was fighting at, like, well, I think he started at 205, I think, and this dude's 5'6", and he lost to a way taller guy. Like, outside of that, this dude is just going and going and going, and he looks unbeatable, guys. So... I don't know, man. I don't know what's next either. I really like that Islam fight. I love the Leah Tapira fight. Like this guy's got a lot of stuff that he can do out there. And like like we've been talking about, that Sterling fight too, because Sterling keeps talking about moving up. And if Sterling takes out Chan O'Malley, he's gonna have a strong case to being like, hey, let's fight, let's get that fight going. Cause you what you're gonna deny him? He's fought everybody. So I don't know, guys. This shit it's getting pretty interesting. It's a great time right now to be alive in MMA right now, especially the UFC, everything. Like it's getting great, and I just can't wait to see all this. And shouts out to Volkanovski. You know, as much as I hate him for beating Max Holloway, you got to respect him. You got to love him. So I can't wait to see what's next. I really think he's going to get that Islam fight. So you guys let me know what you all think. And like I said, with that whole poster thing, just let me know for real. So as always, your boy, Stephen Moose, stares. And let's go, baby.